Hey brothers and sisters, this is an abbreviated version of the Prophecy Update with Damon Duck. You can check out the full report by following the link in the description page. The creation of a world government without the Lord God Jehovah is leading to major mistakes. We are now being told we will own nothing and be happy, and that those who cannot afford to eat traditional foods should learn to eat bugs and worms. I will not say I will never get hungry enough to eat bugs and worms, but I will say that I find the thought repulsive. I prefer that our nation change leaders and that the church returns to God. The following stories seem to indicate that we are getting close. Concerning reprobate minds, I recently reported that America's national debt now exceeds $31 trillion. Inflation is higher than it has been in about 40 years. America is running low on weapons for its military. America's strategic petroleum reserves are low. The lines at food banks are increasing. Several major cities could run out of water next year. And Biden's State Department sent $20,000 to a cultural center in Ecuador to fund 12 drag queen shows, three gay workshops, and a short documentary. On November 27th, it was reported that the Biden State Department has given $50,000 to promote transgender rights in India. Concerning world government, world leaders, including the Biden administration, are cooperating with godless men to determine what the coming world government will be like. These godless men are destroying Western democracy and replacing it with a demonic system that is shaping up like the rule of Antichrist. They have come out in the open and are no longer hiding what they have long been doing behind the scenes for decades. There was an excellent video by The People's Voice that you can find on my Rumble page as it has since been removed, which allows viewers to hear World Economic Forum leaders Klaus Schwab and Noah Harari make the following statements. They said, God is dead. Jesus is fake news. The WF leaders have acquired divine powers to rule over humanity. The new one world religion has arrived and it unites all of humanity. In worshiping at the altar of climate science, techno communism, and eugenics. The WEF has been so successful in its plans that it is acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. The WEF is upgrading humans into gods. If you read between the lines just a little, it's clear that the WEF is consciously attempting to supplant Jesus. Humans do not have a soul. They are hackable animals that do not have the capacity of free will. The World Economic Forum has spent decades quietly infiltrating democratically elected governments, penetrating cabinets, and wielding an outsized influence on the world from the corridors of Schwab's Swiss hideout in Davos. The WEF Global Reset is leading the world into depravity, death panels, depopulation, and total control of everyone on Earth. Concerning China, on November 28th, it was reported that massive protests have broken out in many Chinese cities over China's zero lockdown policy. Waves of dissenters are protesting being locked in their houses for more than three months, the loss of work, food shortages, lack of medicine, and other grievances. The police are using tear gas and batons, arresting demonstrators, and banning people on social media, but the protesters are fighting back, busting through barricades, wrestling with police, demanding the resignation of President Xi, etc. This should tell us something about the kind of world government the World Economic Forum wants for everybody on Earth. On March 6, 2018, it was reported that China was evaluating a program that required every citizen to have a national ID number and a social credit score. Every citizen was being tracked and their social credit score went up or down based on groups they belonged to, what they bought, what they read, the websites they browsed, what others said about them. A high social credit score meant the person was a good citizen. A low credit social score meant the person was not a good citizen. People with high social credit scores were rewarded by letting them have better jobs, live in better houses, 
send their children to better schools. People with low social credit scores were given low paying jobs, poorer housing, their children were sent to poorer schools. How much a person earned, what they could buy or sell, will be based on their loyalty to the government. During the test, millions of citizens were blacklisted. Now we learn that Klaus Schwab wants this for everyone on earth. Concerning the Battle of Gog and Magog, on November 23rd, it was reported that Israel's Prime Minister Netanyahu said he will do everything in his power to stop Iran from acquiring nuclear weapons and the power to use them, even if it means straining Israel ties with the U.S. He added that if defending Israel against Iranian nuclear missiles means he must oppose U.S. policy, he will do it. Concerning hatred for the nation of Israel at the end of the age, on November 23rd, terrorists exploded bombs at two locations, a crowded bus stop and a bus station that killed one student and injured scores of people. Palestinian terrorists have used knives, guns, and car rammings to kill 29 people in Israel this year, but this is the first time they have used bombs to kill and injure people in Jerusalem in nearly a decade. Trump cut off funding to the Palestinians, but Biden has resumed it, and now terrorists are stepping up their violence. Concerning God drawing the Jews back to Israel at the end of the age, on November 18th, it was reported that more than 61,000 people have immigrated to Israel this year. 32,000 from Russia, 14,000 from Ukraine, 3,000 from North America, about 2,000 from France, 1,700 from Belarus, 1,400 from Ethiopia, 1,000 from Argentina, 493 from the UK, and 411 from South Africa and others. Concerning the globalist desire to reduce the population of the earth, on November 22nd, it was reported that the Philippine leaders have rejected UN pressure to legalize abortion on demand, same-sex marriage, and divorce on the grounds that these things conflict with the nation's values, religious beliefs, and cultural traditions. According to the article, abortion is the number one cause of death worldwide, estimated to be between 42 to 73 million in the past year. Finally, are you rapture ready?